Hey everybody, welcome to the Hockey Skate Down. Before we get into the video, I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers. If you want to join our hockey team, please click subscribe, hit the notification bell to all. Thank you all so much, and let's get started. I wanted to do a follow-up video of the aftermath of this whole ratio firing. You know, I still have a lot of people questioning me in my comments section, and feel free to always comment. I just want to tell everybody that I don't want you to think that no comment doesn't matter, or if you're shy to comment, just comment, please, because I want everybody to voice their opinion. Everybody's opinion matters to me. If you're a new hockey fan that's getting into the team, if you want to type new fan, do that. I, I want everybody to feel like this is a place that they can talk about hockey, either, either if they've been a Devil fan for a long time or they're just starting. So I just wanted to lay that out there because I know some people may be timid in commenting. So um, yeah, I wanted to do a follow-up video to everything that happened because I'm still reeling with the news that's going on with um, Ratio or not, no longer our GM. You know, I like Shiro. You know, it's sad to see him go, but, you know, the rec his record after five years wasn't that good. It wasn't. And we got nowhere with him, so I could understand the whole give and take of this whole thing. Um, you know, I just want to read some news because I saw some news come across today, and I had a lot of people questioning me who I think is going to be the next GM. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wish I knew some intel or something to let you guys and girls know, but I don't know anything. I just... I kind of think it's going to go towards Fitzgerald. Um, he seems to have more of the layout of a lot of different areas of the Devils, you know, from Binghamton all the way up. He knows a lot about the systems. He's been, um, you know, he knows a lot about the players that are our prospects. And I'm sure Bo Dornois as well. But Fitzgerald seems to have spent more time with a lot of them. And as you could tell from years past, whenever they would interview him during the intermissions he would speak about all the prospects and speak with such passion about each and every one of them that they're look, looking forward to becoming a devil one day so I, I feel like he's got more of a grasp on a lot of different things uh, relating to the devils and um, you know I think they're going to give him the reins for this year and see how it goes um, I don't think they kind of have a backup plan uh, they this may have this to me seemed like a shock to everybody no analyst knew this was going to happen, as you've been hearing more and more throughout the, the last couple of days. Um, the players themselves, when you watch interviews, just seemed utterly shocked when they interviewed Fitzgerald because he, he had to go there and talk to the media uh, before game time. You know, he was like quivering when he was talking, like he was petrified and didn't know how to answer because it's such a shock. You know, it really was. And, um, you know, I... I think it will be him, and I think Brodeur will, will definitely be that advisor, whatever his role is, or GM. But I just want to read something. I came across something today. Uh, Rene, Laveau, Rene Laveau, I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. He said that Mart Martin Brodeur is, a candidate, is not a candidate for a vacant GM position. His role would be more of a supervisor of hockey ops and an advisor to ownership. This should be said in the next few weeks or months. So, like I said, I think he's going to be more of an assistant GM to lean on if Fitzgerald wants to question certain things of what do you think we should do going forward. And um, I came across another thing. They say that Ray Shiro, well, this, is, this was known that he signed an extension last season, but the thing was that it wasn't mentioned how long. And it came out today that he signed a four-year extension last year. So they wanted to keep him around. I am really interested. I hope something comes out to hear what happened between both sides. I don't know. Was it poor ticket sales or renewals? Was it the whole Hall situation? Was it his losing record? Was it him trying to unload uh, devils that some fans and um, other owners wanted to keep around? Let me get to that as well. Because I saw another thing that... Um, Ray was telling teams that he wasn't interested in talking trade with Paul Mary, and that was per Pierre Lebrun. And he was one of those players that I think a lot of Devil fans would have been pissed off if he traded. Him and Coleman, because I've been hearing Coleman's name, I hope those are two untouchable Devils because they offer a lot to, to this team. They really do. They offer scoring. They're just all-around great players to the team. On ice, off ice, they're just great players to have around, and I hope they're part of our core going forward. I know they're of age, they're a little older than the younger pieces that we have, but this team needs veteran leadership, it does. You need people that have been in certain situations that the youth hasn't been in. So that's why when you see a lot of these 
fans talking about getting rid of Palmieri, getting rid of Coleman, we get a first round pick. You know, you got to understand, first round picks don't always pan out. They really don't. You can get a first round pick. He could take four or five years to develop and not come into our system. So getting a first round pick is good in a way, but you never know how they're going to pan out. And thinking the other side, would you risk someone who's not going to pan out to losing a 30 goal scorer like Palmieri? Or getting a first round pick and losing a defensive specialist that could score 20 plus goals like Coleman? I wouldn't. I want to keep them around. And, um, you know, was Ray trying to look at moving other pieces? That's the only thing I could think of, is that he wanted to unload these players and kind of try to rebuild a little more and take a little longer, where ownership kind of wants to win now. And, you know, so if it's not Paul Mary, who would really upset the fan base to trade? You know, I I would think Coleman, but the rest of them to me, like, Vaughn and I like, I want him extended, and I'll get back to that in a little bit. But who else is there? There's Wood. Wood was on the trading block uh, beginning kind of like um, a, li- a couple of weeks after the beginning of the season because he was playing poorly, but now he's turning it around. So he can attract some sort of interest, but what are you going to get back for him? Um, he was, I believe, a third-round pick. So can you get a third or f- a pick like that, a second or third-round pick for him? That's going to be a question. I think if he's moved, I think it's going to be part of a package to get more back for him. Um, Zaka is a name that's always tossed around, but he's one player that I wouldn't mind keeping. I know he's played in 30 something, uh, 30 whatever games he's played, and he only has four goals, but he's piled on a couple of assists. But as we've seen from the last couple of years, he's more of a defensive player. So I would like to keep him around. He's a cheap cap hit. If Zajac can't handle it next year, or if something happens where he's traded for some reason, Zaka could step into that role. So that's why I would I would try to keep him around. And hopefully he develops one day where he just starts scoring. Because he's got a hell of a shot. He just has to learn how to use it more and be more physical with his big frame. Uh, Simmons. Um, Simmons is another player I think they could have they could trade him. You know, but again, what are you getting back from a fifth, sixth round pick? Is it worth it? Uh, you have Zajac and Green. So these could have been possibilities that Shiro wanted to move but didn't. I mean, that ownership got wind of and they didn't want to move them. So that could have been something that caused uh, Shiro's demise. Um, you know, Devils are now 17-22-7. and seven. They have 41 points. Tough loss tonight in Toronto. Uh, I knew this was going to be a tough game. So, um, yeah, so on to the next one. So all you could do at this point is try to keep winning the next games. But, um, you know, it was a tough game. You know, it's tough to contain that team. They have a lot of great scorers and their top talent is elite, so... And you saw it on that, I don't know, Matthews had three goals, but that second goal I think he scored, it was just the puck went from one end to the other and then went back down and he just barely touched it and it went in. But it was done so fast and so effortlessly. These guys have such skill. And uh, trade deadline. It's February 24, 2020. What will the Devils do? You know, with this whole ownership thing, what what's going to happen? They're kind of mentioning that they're in a win-now mode. Or that they want to win sooner than later. So I think the later is what Shiro wanted to do, where the owners wanted to win faster. So will the Devils be buyers? Will they be sellers? I I don't know at this point. You know, with Shiro at the helm, you kind of could assume moves were going to be made and which players were going to be moved. But with Fitzgerald and Brodeur, I don't know what's going to happen. And my biggest question and worry about them is, can they try to make a good trade with another GM? GMs know that, especially the ones that have been around for a while, know that they're new GMs. They may try to take advantage of a trade. So hopefully they stick to their guns and try to maintain and get the most back for the Devils. Which I think they will, but you know some teams may try to fleece them in a trade. So hopefully Fitzgerald and Brodeur have that way of speaking to players to try to attract them, to sign them in the offseason, maybe as a free agent. And I hope that they can try to work with these GMs to make good trades to help us out. So, fingers crossed, people. It's going to be the next couple of weeks and heading into the offseason. It's going to be very, very curious to see what happens with this team. And um, there was news that came out after this, after the, the, the last game. Um, they said that... I don't know if this is true, if this is fan-drawn speculation, I don't know. But I saw the news was coming out that Vatanen was no longer being shopped. 
that Fitzgerald and Bordeaux were trying to work out an extension that both sides want to reach an extension. And the extension that I saw was five years at six million AAV plus. So when I saw that, I'm like, what? You know, that's kind of high for Vaden. But, um, you know, with his injury history, best contract I do if they want to resign him in between two and three years, three years max, and anything up to six. I wouldn't go over six. I really wouldn't. Because there's a lot of free agent defensemen that are really good, really good this year. And if you could spend an extra million to get them to help a little more, you know, that's always another option to go. But it's just, it's good that they see that they're work, trying to work out extension with Vaughn. And the uh, last thing I wanted to talk about was Heischer. You know, congratulations to Heischer on uh, being selected for the All-Star game as, to represent the Devils because Palms is hurt, so he can't play. So it's, it's, an, it's a great honor, and I hope he does well, as all Devil fans want him to do well. And we were really pushing for him to make it, too, as the last man in. But, you know, if any other news breaks, I'll do another video. I just wanted to do this video because I had a lot of Devil fans still questioning me. I know it's still bothering them, this whole uh, ratio thing. It's bothering me, too, because it's leaving us in that state of we don't know what's going to happen next sort of thing where, um, you know, we're worried. Honestly, we're worried. And I don't want... We all don't want any moves to set us back further and it be a longer rebuild. You know, hopefully Fitzgerald and Brodeur do a good job and either bring in a piece to help us out now or work out good trades that Shiro was kind of looking to do as well. So, um, you know, thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Join our hockey team. Have a great night. Take it easy.